uh, Nana Ofosu Osafo says, this is not the Paul we knew years back. Great. I like this. I like this text because I'm going to explain. What happened to you, Paul? They turned you into a hatchet man, doing damage control for people who should know better. Gosh. Okay. So this is my response, and I'm going to explain more. I said, no. I became angry. He's saying that I have changed, something like that, Paul. People say that a lot. Because, you see, in those days, we used to have Good Evening Ghana panel discussion. We don't do touch screen analysis. We were, we were still building the program. Not that we didn't know we can do it. We knew. We didn't have the resources, the equipment, and the research, and all of that. And even now, if you ask me, what I want to do with Good Evening Ghana, we are doing about 50%. What I really want to do with Good Evening Ghana is just 50% you're seeing. We are waiting for more resources. As resources come and as we expand better studios, we will, we will do it. I believe that by the beginning of next year, we will have another studio much better, better improved, and then we will deal with it. Uh, hopefully, it will be in Accra. So we are moving on. We, we are happy to be trailblazers. We are going to do a lot more. A lot is coming. So the, those who say we have changed, we are improving and developing. Now I'm going to answer the question. So Nanofu, so I told him, no, I became angry with fake politics, full of hatred. So I'm against it. That's what happened. Politics was not like this when I started. But since 2012, a certain group of people made politics about hatred and insult, and I am against it. So Nanafusu Osafo, if you are listening, I'm answering your question. When I started doing journalism, and, and recently I, I heard the GJA talking about journalists being, not being well paid. I think that's a conversation that has different dimensions to it. It's not just journalists being well paid. There are many other dimensions to it. I'll come to that another day. That's not for today. Um, now, this one. When I started doing this work, politicians were not insulting each other. I mean, I, 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 I worked with all the politicians from 1998. Alhaji Huduyaya was for many years the general secretary of the NDC. Never once would you hear Hudu saying somebody is stupid. Somebody, the kinds of things we see today, saying and going on Akan radio and insulting with Jimmy. That was not part of the politics. Hudu was the MPP, NDC general secretary. Damboche was the MPP. Never would you. There was nothing like, uh, 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 what the phone, what are they called? Serial callers. There was nothing like serial callers. People who were phoning were genuine people. Some of them are party people, yes, but there was no regime of serial callers who have to go and are deployed to go and insult. That wasn't available. Now let me tell you where the, when, that, when that started. That started with the 2008 election. When Nana Kufuado was elected as the MPP flag bearer, that's when the politics of Ghana changed because there was an army of people out of the loins of evil who were against Nana Kufuado. They were. Please ask Kweku whether he got a constitutional provision I'm looking for, the Electoral Commission. Ask him, I need it on this story. There were people who were against Anakufa. They had said everything about him. They had said he would never be president. They had said, no, I don't need it yet. Thank you that you have it. I'll, I'll call for it later on. So you can change the background, but I'll, I'll come to this. They said Anakufa was a cocaine dealer. They had never heard it before. They hadn't seen it. Was, it, it was never existent. And they put this in the forefront of the politics. That's how they did the politics in 2008, the NDC people. That's how they started. So you notice that in 2012, MPP also started responding. I remember the Abe Fakabu incident where he responded brutally, brutally, brutally to them because he had done something serious and he had been invited by police and he had bears out of the police and showed the police what the NDC people say about Akufuado. Now, all of those things were said about him. They said he would never be president. They said he would never do it. And I had covered Akufuado as a member of parliament and I always thought, in, among all of us who covered parliament at that time, we always thought that this man would make a good president. At that time, we covered parliament. All of us thought so. Okay. So I had always looked at him like that. So when we supported him in 2007 and he won, and then the NDC people came with he's this, he's that, he's killed his wife. They said all kinds of things. And initially it was ignored. But you get to find out that people believe it. Yes, people believe it. So that is when looking at Akufuado and looking at the process of how the politics was becoming, we decided to institute the editorial so that we would deal with truth. Because there was too much propaganda and hatred as part of the, and it's still there today. So much, look at the, the Ghana story, for instance. That was not part of our politics then. A member of parliament goes to film, the organizers go to film and come and show and share it to media. And just, you see, the desperation of politics was not part of the story. Now, I would like to show you something. Part of the reason why 
Akufado is important to the work that, I, that we do. I'll show you. Not Akufado the president. Forget about Akufado. Akufado the politician who won elections to become president. Akufado the one that everybody said he will not be president. They say he's short, so he won't be president. They said all kinds of things against him. Why will one man run for president and everybody is saying, or not everybody, a certain group of people are saying all that about him when it's actually not true. Now, after two election cycles, when the Ghanaian people found that it wasn't true, you saw the massive vote that he got. But there's another story. There's another story. Let me come to it. Put out the heads of states uh, photographs for me. Yes, there's another story. Now, I'll tell you. You may not believe it, uh, but it is true, okay? This is Osage for the president, right? Now, since Osage for the president, when he left and when he died, it is believed that Osage for the president had determined how every other person should become president of Ghana. It's a spiritual matter. That's why I don't force it on you. It's a spiritual matter. So you have to believe it or not. Spiritual. It's not verifiable. It's not test tube. I don't have test tube to show it. Okay. Now, Osajifu had determined that. For you to become president of Ghana, he had determined a certain spiritual path. This story that I'm telling you, viewers, has quite a bit to do with our good friend who died, Jacob Echebi Lamte. It has quite a lot to do with Jake. This story I'm telling you. So pay attention. In five minutes, I'll finish. And I'll, you understand the Akufado issue. Okay. Osajifu, the president, had determined that to be president of Ghana, you have to go a certain path, okay? All right, now let's go to the presidents that came after him. For the presidents that came after him, this was the next. Uh, Edward Akufa. Do you have Prime Minister Buzia? Because, well, yeah, for them, you have to add the two of them because it was a bicephalous executive. So, President Akufa is here. Prime Minister Buzia is here. Together, they formed the executive of the Second Republic. Both of them determined that they will not follow the path, or they probably even didn't know that Nkrumah had determined some path. Now, this is the record. For those who didn't know that Nkrumah had determined a path for you to become president of Ghana, they were overthrown. Edward Akufuado and Prime Minister Buzia, they were overthrown because they didn't know or they didn't use the path that Nkrumah had determined. I'm saying it seriously. It's not, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm coming to the point. You understand? I'm not, it's not a joke. It's a serious matter about Ghana. All right, so they go. Then comes uh, Dr. Lehman. Dr. Lehman did not, either did not know or he didn't go along the path that you needed to go to be president of Ghana. Okay, so he was overthrown. Then comes the famous JJ. JJ started by a coup d'etat and later transferred to constitutional rule. When he was about to transfer to constitutional rule, he was told that chief, for you to be president of Ghana, elected, like in Kroma was elected, you have to go through a certain spirit. I know what it is, but I'm just not saying it. You have to go through a certain spiritual path and also do certain things. Fly left and Rollins agreed. That is the Kwame Nkrumah mausoleum at the old polo ground. That was his creation. It's related to this story I'm telling you. It's, really, it's very interesting. It's related. JJ putting up the Nkrumah mausoleum to honor Dr. Kwame Nkrumah at the old polo grounds, bringing his body from Nkrofo to Accra is related to the story. So JJ did that. He did two terms. Yeah? Okay. Comes John Ajekum Kofo. He was told that, look, if you do not go through this path to be president of Ghana, you will never be president of Ghana. Well, he obeyed. He went through the path. So during Ghana at 50, when Ghana was 50 years old, billboards were put up of Nkrumah and Kofo sitting in a chair. They never sat in a chair together like that. But there were billboards put up of Nkrumah sitting here. It was beautiful. Nkrumah sitting here, Kofo sitting there laughing, smiling at each other, broad smile. It was beautiful. And then the renaming of the uh, University of Science and Technology, which was Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And then after the coup, it was taken out. And from the coup in 66, up until uh, President Kofo became president in 2001, the university was called the University of Science and Technology. Now, President Kofo restored the Kwame Nkrumah name onto the university. That has to do with the mix. He did. He did. Yeah, he did. Because he was told that if you don't go and walk here, it's a path you have to walk. If you don't go and walk in this path and pledge to do something to enhance the Osajifu's name, forget it. If, even if you win the election, they overthrow you. So he did. All right. Professor J.A. E. Mills was told that, look, if you don't walk this path, and do these things about your Sajifo. Forget it. You will win the election, nothing will happen. Or you may not even win the election. Professor Mills had lost uh, two elections. He was concerned. So his advisors took him, and he did. All right. 
What is in the mix? What is in the mix is the uh, institution of 21st September as Kwame Nkrumah's birthday holiday, stand by Professor Mills. It is part of the mix. It's the mix. It's there. That's, that's, I'm telling you something very serious about the history and destiny of our country. Very, very serious. I've known this since 2017, but we don't talk about it. Today I want to talk about it because people are asking me, and then you are defending, you are defending. I'm explaining why. All right. So this is Professor Mills. He did that. Then he restored the, the uh, Kwame Nkrumah holiday. All right. Who is next? John Dramani Mahama, my best friend. Now, he was told that if you have to be president, you have to go through this. Okay. That this I won't say because anybody can come and say he didn't go through this. That's why I'm showing you the things that they did. That one, they can't say they didn't do. But uh, this person here, they can come and say I didn't pass anywhere. They did. But I, I don't know. This one I know. What did he do? The restoration of the Kwame Nkrumah circle. Restoring Osajifu's statue there and doing the circle Dubai. That was for Nkrumah. That was, what is it? it was the mix. It was it. That was it. The mix. You do something that enhances the name of the Osajifu. So have you seen all of them? They do it. They do it. You don't do it, you will be overthrown like him. Or you overthrown like him, or overthrown like him, and you will not become like him. Okay, fast forward. So, uh, uh, Nanado, as he was then called, was told that chief, to become president of Ghana, you have to go and pass here, and you have to do something. He said, me, J.B. Danko's son, I will never do it. That's what he said. He said, it's not that I'm a Christian or his religion. I won't do it. That's why I say Obeche Bilamte is in the mix. But so in 20, 2008, when he lost the election, he was told that, Chief, you see why you lost the election? You lost this election because you didn't do the thing. He must have given it a thought, I think. So, mm. Okay, then comes 2012. They go back to him. Will you do it? He said, I won't do it. He said, hey, you won't do it. You can't be president of Ghana. He said, I will not do it. I won't. Okay. So 2012 came, he lost. So after the election, they went back to him. You see, Oga, you see, you do, you do, you do, you see. You see, you didn't win. So he gave it a thought. Called some spiritual people and said, I've been told about this. And, and this story I'm telling you, Kenoferata is very involved in this story because he went to South Africa, met some guy who was talking to him about how, why it's difficult for his cousin to be president. And this South African guy said, there's something you people need to do. And Ken said, I know, we've been told, but it's difficult for us. We can't do that. That's not our faith. That's not our worship. We can't. So then Ken came back and organized people, spiritual people. I'm coming to the Constitution article. It's a very interesting story. So President Kufado said, I won't do it. They said, eh. So the 2016 to you won't do it. He said, no, I won't do it. So they got spiritual people and said, can we go and overturn this thing? Very difficult question. Well, there's about 12 or 16 of them. They listened and said, okay, Mr. President, where is the thing? He said, the thing is here. I've been there before. It's there. So can we go and look at it? They said, yeah, go and look at it. Organized cars. They went, I won't stay where it is. They went to look at it. And they told the president that we've seen it. It's there. It's very there. What we need to do is a prayer chain. It's a very serious prayer chain. This story I'm telling you, some important people in this country know it. They know it. It's a prayer chain we need to do, Mr. President. So we have to start now. Okay, President said start. So they start and then they discover a lot more in the whole narrative. So they need to move from that spot to other parts of the country. So they come back to him and said, Chief, we are on it. We, it will work. We will be able to uh, release Ghana from the shackles of this matter. However, we need more time. And we have been told that you and your party, the MPP, wants the election on November 7th. This is 2016. Those of you who remember, Charlotte Osei was in the mix. I interviewed her. She said the election was coming on November 7th. We all wanted the election on November 7th. I want, everybody wanted it because we looked at what happened in 2008 and it was messy. And we looked at the American example where they have the election the first week in November. The first Tuesday of November is America's election on election year. And then the inauguration is on the 21st of January. So we all thought November works. So they came back to him and said, this November 7th, we can't meet it. And he said, oh, but my party and I, we've all resolved. In fact, in parliament, everybody has agreed. So we are going 7th November. They told him, no, 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 we can't. You see, if we do 7th November, we won't finish the work. We have to finish the work, come to you, consecrate you, and then the election day comes. And then he said, well, okay, all right. So 
to the constitutional article. Please put it up. Or do I have it next? Okay. Uh, the election of the president shall be on the terms of universal adult suffrage and shall subject to provisions of this constitution be conducted in accordance with such regulations as may be prescribed by constitutional instruments by the electoral commission and shall be held so as to begin. Uh, is it coming? Uh, okay, I'm sure uh, the, the thing is messing up. They'll put it up very soon. All right. And uh, okay, let me see. <laughs> a, where a president is in office not earlier than four. What is this? Four months, not later than one month before the term of office expires. Okay, great. So this is it. The law says not later than one month before it expires. In any other case, within three months after the office of the president, no, where is the provision about the, uh, the, the parliament? Okay, they'll get it for me. Now, so this provision of the constitutional date for the election can only be changed by two-thirds of members of parliament. Two-thirds of members of parliament can change the 7th December date. So at that time, parliament was united that we are going to change this and make it 7th November. Everybody, President Mahama was part of it, the electoral commissioners, everybody was happy with it. Everybody was happy with it. So parliament was going to unanimously vote to give us a November 7th date for election instead of December 7th. Politicians were happy, it reduces campaign time by one month, you can keep your money, da, da, da. everybody liked it. Then the people went to the, the, uh, the president and told him that we need more time. So you know what happened? President then called minority leader, Che Men Sabonsu, said, come and see me. He went and said, Che, we need to change this thing all. I don't know whether he told Che Men Sabonsu the details. I don't know what conversation they had. But he clearly told him that this has to change. We, we have to repeat December 7th. We cannot do November 7th for some important reason. Okay. And then the November, uh, the parliament, so the parliament needed to test. So Che Men Sabonsu and his group decided not to support the NDC to change the date. The NDC were shocked and they were laughing at them. They said, ah, but you MPP, you said you wanted a date change. We are now ready to change the date. You are running away. It was a, I'm, I'm, I, if I had it earlier, I would have gotten the video for you. There's a video in Parliament on that day when they were laughing at Tim Sabonsu when he told the speaker that we will not participate. Everybody was laughing at him. Doa Jaho was like, ah, what, what is happening? What's wrong with you? You people came to me that you want the amendment. Now the amendment is that you say you don't want it anymore. But that was the reason. That was the reason. They couldn't disclose it. So Akufuado is the only Ghanaian president since independence who has ascended the throne not going through that. So that is important for Ghana. That is why I stand with him. It's a spiritual matter. He is the only one president who is going to do a two-term, who has not gone through the path. That is why you see the things that are happening, happening. The things that come to his head, the, 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 the fury against his candidature at the beginning, it came out of the loins of evil. Is out of the loins of evil. That's why the fury came against him. Because the spirits knew that he would not obey that path. He wouldn't do it. He said, I will never do it. He didn't do it. He became president of Ghana. And he didn't just become president. He became president with the highest number of votes. So if you watch the video, and Terry, get me that video, the election declaration results, the last one, uh, 2017 election, in his house where everybody was with him. I'll show you something. If you watch that video, I'm going to show it to you. When the, the fury was going on, you see that immediately after the announcement, he left his study, climbed the steps, said everybody should leave him, and went upstairs. And he went to consume, com communicate with his God that I now know that you're a true God. Because he won by a massive margin. The man, they said he will never be president. He's short, he's this, he's that, 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 that. He won by the biggest margin ever. All the people who say, well, what happened? The man you say he can never win, he won by the biggest margin because he was able to break the shackles of the loins of evil. That's why it happened. It is my duty and my privilege to declare Nana Adodankwa Akufuado as a president-elect of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you. This is Rebecca, of course, of course, of course. Of course, this is Rebecca and Valerie, and uh, I see Dokia in the back there. I'm not sure. This is Adri Blankson on the right side of the screen. Oh, Samira Baumea, certainly. Certainly, she was about to be first lady, uh, second lady, I should say. And uh, that was Dokia hugging on to Rebecca. Seratu, president secretary in the background. Stanley Adri Blankson, uh, council of state for Greater Accra. Al Haji Mumuni, Mahamadu Baumea. I nearly said Mumuni Baumea. Uh, shaking and congratulating his boss that. Uh, 
uh, congratulating his boss that uh, he's, he's done a good job. Oh, that's his brother, uh, Sir Edward, Edward Akufuado, shaking hands with his brother, congratulating him for being president. And uh, everybody in the room so excited. I keep an eye on President Akufuado. He's going to do something. He, aha, there he goes. He said, everybody leave me alone. The grandchildren were upstairs. There he goes. He's climbing up to the grandchildren. He's walking on the stairs. He's going in there. He's by himself. His wife is not with him. First grandchild says, hello, grandpa. Second grandchild says, congratulations, grandpa. All the grandchildren are coming in that way. They are coming. Yeah, there they go. And that was it. So when he went inside, we didn't film. When he came back, then uh, I, uh, Apie 2 came in. At that time, he was COP Apie 2, later on to be IGP. So you saw the president's move upstairs. That move was to go and tell God that you have done it for me. I believe it. Now I know it is true. Now as soon as he was elected, the people who were embarrassed that they said he would never be elected, and he has been elected, they started trying to justify why they said he will not. So they said he's done militia documentary, the Manasseh one. That's the first thing they brought. He has militia at the castle. Some hogwash like that. We threw it away. Manasseh was sacked from joy because he lost it. I'll say it again. Manasseh was sacked for joy. should come and tell me Manasseh was not sacked. Samson Ladi shouldn't call me and say, no, no, no. Joy should publish that I've been saying Manasseh was sacked. He was, he was sacked because he lost the media commission against the president. He lost it badly. That's why he was sacked. He still remains sacked. Okay. So that is the reason. Now, the things that come into his head are good things for our people. These are things that have not happened for a long time. Kufuor did well. But free SHS, which came into his head, which even his cabinet said, we can't do it. He said, I will do it. It's what is helping Ghanaian children. Recently, this today, and I'm ending the story at 10 o'clock, just yesterday, look at what he did with the police. It must come into your head unless you are coming from the loins of evil and you are generating a narrative from the loins of evil. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why people say, oh, you've changed. You've I've changed because politics has become evil. And we have to stand for it. I believe, and you can doubt it, I believe that I am anointed by God to occupy this position for the purpose of the declaration of the acceptable year of the Lord for Ghana. I'll say it again. I believe, and I'm not the only one, God is using a lot of people, but I believe I'm one of them. I believe that I have been anointed for this platform to work together with others to be able to declare the acceptable year of the Lord for Ghana. I, I, I want to say it again, but I'm being told not to say it again. That's it. That's why I do what I do. It's not Sergio Ramos. It's not Rio Ferdinand. It's not Nemanda Vidic. It's Michael Asien. That's what I like to do. Let me end with this. See, see this video of the police, the police uh, barracks that Akufado recently commissioned. Have a look. This is the police uh, infrastructure that you are seeing. Now, if you are a president coming out of the loins of evil, you will not be able to dream this for the police. You won't. Because you are busy satisfying the evil that brought you to power. But with this kind of power, you will be able to do this. Basketball court. Look, look at what they are doing for the police. This is comparable to police in England, police in America, police in everywhere. There's heater in their, in their washrooms. They have, look at the kitchen. Look, look at the kitchen. This is how our police should live. The police, this is how they should live.